What's up guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 2 of the tutorial series on Amazon WebSocket API Gateway tutorial. In the previous tutorial, we had created the WebSocket API as you can see on my screen. And now in this tutorial, we will configure routes. Uh, so first we will try to understand what exactly routes is and then probably we will move on to the configuration and the backend integration uh, with the respective routes that we have on the screen, right? So uh, I am within the API gateway uh, that I have created in the previous tutorial, right? And I am within routes. Now here we have three options uh, that comes by default that, that is connect, disconnect and default route. So right now they are uh, disabled, right? To add those routes, we have to click on it and then it will give us the option to integrate the backend. So uh, uh, backend integration can be a Lambda function or the HTTP uh, endpoint or uh, any Amazon service or it can be a mock integration, right? Apart from that, we have dollar request dot body dot action. So this is the route selection expression that we have configured in the previous tutorial, right? So uh, here we are going to start with the assumption that uh, we have configured all these three uh, routes that is connect, disconnect and default. And all these three routes are integrated with the uh, Lambda function as a part of the backend integration, right? So uh, having said that, and uh, with that assumption, we will move on to this diagram, right? So as I said, uh, we have connect, default, and disconnect route as, as configured, right? So basically what will happen is uh, API gateway will call the connect route when the persistent connection between the client and uh, WebSocket API is being initiated, right? So at the very first time, uh, when the connection uh, is being uh, persistent between client and server, the connect route will get executed, right? And once the uh, connection is open, uh, we will have the uh, functionality for bi-directional uh, messages, right? So, uh, so once it is uh, opened and the connect route is executed, we will have this option, right? So that comes as a part of the route selection expression, right? And Regarding disconnect route, uh, API gateway calls the disconnect route when the client or the server disconnects from the API, right? So API gateway will try to execute the disconnect route uh, when, when there is a termination of connection uh, either from the client side or the server side, right? So it can be a timeout or manually terminating the connection from the client side, right? So at that point of time, uh, disconnect route will get executed. Now, uh, having said that, uh, we have opened the connection and, and we are here, right? So now here we have route selection expression, right? Uh, just to uh, give you an idea. So let me uh, change this, it's action over here, right? So now uh, we have route selection expression as request.body.action, right? And now the client will uh, send the JSON payload right uh, that is action colon message so this is the key value pair now once the payload is sent what route selection expression will do is it will evaluate that uh, payload so here uh, this action uh, represent uh, this key within the payload right so it will try to look for the uh, action as a key within that payload if it is there then it will uh, grab the value of that key so basically in our case right now it's message now once route selection expression will have that value as a message, it will look for the possible routes uh, with the exact match, right? So here uh, we don't have any other routes uh, except the default one. So what it will do is it will forward or it will pass on that request to the uh, default route because it is unable to find the message route. Now for example, uh, we have another route saying message over here right now in this case what will happen uh, client will send the payload that is action message it will look for action within that payload so it have as a key and once it identify the key it will grab the uh, value of that and it will look for the possible route so now we have message as a route so it will pass on this request to this route right and this route will have its backend integration. So let's assume uh, it also have the Lambda function as a backend integration, right? Now, uh, for example, uh, if I'm passing the payload as service, right? 
so now uh, in this case uh, what will happen is uh, it will first evaluate this uh, JSON. It will look for the action uh, as a key and it's unable to find it. So what it will do is it will by default pass on this uh, request or payload to the default route, right? Because it is unable to find the action. Now same goes for uh, if I say action help, right? So I'm just uh, trying to uh, give you an example. So now the payload is action as a help. Now uh, route selection expression will evaluate this payload. It will look for action within that payload. And once it is successful, it will grab the value of that key uh, that is help in this case. Now it will look for the uh, possible routes uh, and it will try to match help uh, with the possible routes, right? So here we have message and default, right? So what it will do is it is unable to find the help route. So it will by default pass on this request to the default route. Now, in case uh, if we go ahead and create the default route, sorry, not default, help route, then uh, instead of passing or forwarding this request uh, to the default route, it will pass on this request to the help route and it will have some backend integration. Let's assume uh, it has Lambda function, right? So this is how uh, it will evaluate the payload, right? So, uh, for example, a uh, client can pass non JSON messages. So instead of uh, this JSON message, a client can pass non JSON messages, right? So maybe uh, I can say something like this uh, text payload, for example, right? So basically, uh, non JSON messages are directed to the default route that you configure, right? So because uh, here it's unable to uh, find any key value pair, right? So that's how route selection expression will treat the non-JSON uh, payload, right? Or the non-JSON messages. So uh, let's change this once again. I will say action message, right? So at high level, what will happen is the service will use this route selection expression to uh, identify the uh, keys which exactly matches with the route. If uh, the key does not match the route or if that route doesn't exist, then it will by default forward that request or the forward that message to the default route, right? And for example, uh, if no routes match the evaluated value and we even don't have the default route, right? So we don't even have this default route, then what it will do is the service will return the error, right? So it's a good idea to always have the default route to uh, pass on or to send the response to the client saying that it's an invalid message or whatever, right? So at the high level, that's how uh, this route selection expression or the routes worked, right? So here I have mentioned a few points. So connection is open. So once the connection is persistent, the connect route will get triggered. Once the connect route is triggered, we will have the bi-directional uh, messages uh, feature, right? So we can send uh, a message from client to server and server to client and uh, vice versa, right? And then uh, once the connection is and then uh, once the connection is closed, the disconnect uh, route will get triggered. Now let's go back to uh, API gateway. So here uh, we are going to configure connect and disconnect route and we will not configure default route. Uh, we will come to that at later point of time, right? In some other tutorial. So now uh, we will require two Lambda function and the IAM role. So we will start with the IAM role. So navigate to IAM management console. Once you are there, click on roles from the left panel and say create role. Select Lambda as a service because we are creating this role for the Lambda function and then click on next permission. Here we will attach AWS Lambda execute permission, right? So by default, it will have uh, S3 access and the CloudWatch access. Then click on next tags, add a tag if you want, then finally click on review and give it a role name. So I will say uh, websocket underscore lambda underscore role. Okay, uh, it already exists. Maybe I will say websocket underscore lambda. 
right? And click on create role. Now, once the IAM role is created, uh, navigate to Lambda management console. So here we are going to create two Lambda function, one for the connect route and one for the disconnect route, right? So once you are within Lambda management console, click on create function from the right top corner. Give it a function name. I will say WebSocket connect, right? And I will select runtime as Python 3.8. Within permission, use existing role. Select the role that we have just created, that is WebSocket underscore Lambda. And say create function. Now go back to Lambda management console again, say create function. Give it a name, say WebSocket disconnect. Select the runtime, I will say Python 3.8. Within permission, I will choose use an existing role and select the IAM role that we have just created, that is WebSocket underscore Lambda. And say create function. Now, once both the function is created, uh, go back to API gateway, right? Uh, go within uh, routes from the left panel. Now click on this connect and it will give us the option for backend integration. So this option are similar to what we have in the REST API uh, for methods, right? So we will select Lambda function. We will use proxy integration, right? Uh, so within connect root, uh, we will say WebSocket connect, right? So this is the name of the Lambda function. And once it is configured, click on save, say OK. Now we will go ahead and configure the or add the disconnect route, right? So click on disconnect. Again, it will give you an option to I mean, it will give you an option for backend integration, uh, like the Lambda function. So that is WebSocket disconnect and say save. Okay. Right now, uh, both the route is uh, created and configured, right? So that's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. So probably in the next tutorial, we are going to deploy this. And then I will show you how we can connect to the WebSocket API and and that's it. Yeah, so uh, we'll see. So before I uh, close on, uh, let's go back to diagram once again. So this route selection expression uh, can be mentioned in different ways. So it can be mentioned uh, within curly braces. But I'm not going to cover those things in this tutorial. I want to keep this tutorial uh, as simple as possible or kind of basic. So I will cover uh, these things in a separate tutorial, right? So what this curly braces will do is uh, curly braces can be used to explicitly define variable boundaries, right? I will explain you uh, when I will uh, cover this, right? So right now, uh, let's go with this. Now, apart from this, connect and disconnect route is not necessary for opening and closing the connection, right? So it's optional. So uh, the question might arise that why should we even use it? So uh, let's look at it this way. Right, so when the connection is open successfully, every time it generates a unique connection ID and that connection ID persists throughout the session until the session uh, or the connection is closed or terminated, right? So in order to send messages uh, from the client to the server or vice versa, the connection ID is required, right? So this bidirectional uh, transfer or the exchange of message will take place based on the unique connection ID that is being generated while connecting to the uh, API or the server, right? So we need to store the connection ID uh, somewhere uh, temporary, right? When the connection is open. And finally, uh, it also needs to be deleted once the connection is closed, correct? So in this case, the connect and disconnect route will help. Hence, uh, we can write a logic or script within the respective backend integration that is Lambda function right to store uh, the connection id for example in the dynamo db and when the connection is closed delete that connection id from the dynamo db right apart from that connect route is also used for authorization right so 
though uh, both are optional uh, it's a good idea to go ahead and have both of them right apart from that default route is also optional it's not mandatory to configure but i think it's a good idea to implement a default route to handle the unusual request so it can be a non json messages uh, that is uh, coming through right and the default route will help in that case so uh, probably i will certainly cover these things in the upcoming tutorials after deployment right so that's all i wanted to cover in this tutorial i hope this uh, tutorial is not overwhelming right and till that time as usual if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service then please leave them below and i will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible and if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time